Okay, well, welcome back. This is the fifth of five episodes. We were talking about Hymns Advocacy 101. I have with me Ian Slade. My name is John Conklin, and I am a healthcare information systems uh, professional. I've been in the industry for about 15 years. I've been developing connected health solutions used across various facilities in the United States. Ian, would you like to give us a short introduction on your background? Sure, sure. I am a registered nurse by trade. I've been in the industry for about uh, 15 years or so now. Most of my work has been in the healthcare IT space. I've uh, moved more into operations and management now, but nonetheless, um, really focus on getting technology to help with patient care and also with the overall efficiencies of hospitals. So. That's great, great. And the previous four episodes, we've talked about advocacy in general, scheduling meetings with our right. legislators, right. Uh, the visits, and the follow-up visits. This episode, we're going to talk a little bit more specifics about HIMSS advocacy efforts, uh, more specifically, how members can get involved, um, and the structure of the HIMSS advocacy committees, both sure. at a chapter and, and even at the national level. So if you could give our viewers some information on that, that would be great. Definitely. Uh, my first advice is to go to the website, um, go to the HIMSS website, hymns.org, and we obviously have a, a local uh, website for the chapters, socalhymns.org. And from an overall structure, so if you want to look at it from the top, we have folks uh, that are helping out uh, different directors, directors from federal level, state level, and different staff members that help the chapters like ours to be successful. So the group of uh, the advocates are, are part of uh, the chapter advocacy roundtable, and we are represented in all of the 50 states. And we have actually a call every month where we talk about the issues that are pertinent to the different chapters and also uh, issues that we want to push on a federal level. So you have the different committees up on top that I talked about, and then you have the advocacy committees per chapter. So that is the basic structure uh, pretty much for all of the chapters. And for our viewers, uh, maybe the current examples of, of topics of discussion that we're talking about currently with our legislative uh, or congressmen and their staffs, maybe you could just mentioned sure. a few of that just to give them an idea on what we're talking about. Definitely. So uh, just off the top of my head, some of the very uh, important issues are around interoperability. So basically making sure that the systems talk, the data is shared properly, and also the right information at the end of the day gets to the provider when they're at the point of giving care to a patient. Sure. So, that is the goal of interoperability. Now, there are a lot of issues surrounding that because you have different players in the mix, right? And everyone has a piece of the data. So being able to share that is very important in a secure way and, as, and at the same time making it transparent. Um, so second, se So security would be... Security, exactly. So I'm just going to jump into that. Uh, Cybersecurity is very important. Uh, if you guys are following the news, so a lot of security breaches both in and outside of the healthcare industry. So we want to make sure that the laws that are out there really help protect the security, not just of the organization and hospitals, but more importantly of the patients. Because at the end of the day, if people don't feel secure about their data, they won't feel secure about sharing that data. So there's right. a lot that hinges upon securing that data. So sure. it ties directly into interoperability and sharing. So. Right, right, perfect, perfect. So if, if there is a, a HIMSS member, or even somebody who's not currently a HIMSS member, but somebody who's in the health information technology space right now, sure. who's viewing this video, and they're interested in not only becoming a HIMSS member for, for that type of person, but um, if they're interested in advocating for you know, improving healthcare through information technology, right. how would they get involved? You know, what, what would you recommend? Sure. So the very first thing is to be informed. So go, I keep saying this, but go to the website and then you get uh, more information about 
what's going on, who's involved, who are the key players, and just reach out. I even if you uh, get to, let's say, the membership coordinator, they can lead you to the advocacy team. And um, it's very important to just take that first step. You know, sure. get, in get, get informed, be involved, reach out, and then everything else uh, kind of falls into place. Yeah, and the website um, could be the, the nationalhymns.org website. Right, right. And possibly uh, searching for a local chapter website. Exactly. And, and you can uh, Google your uh, local hymns chapter and, and, and it'll come up. Great. All right. Thank you. So um, I had the, the honor of uh, last week participating in some advocacy efforts through the HIMSS organization. Okay. And uh, it was National Healthcare IT Week. And HIMSS uh, members, uh, uh, me included, attended uh, public policy meetings and we sort of stormed the hill, if you will. Uh, Capitol Hill. In a very respectful way. In a way. very respectful way. Shout out way, to Leslie. Wearing our ties. <laughs> we, definitely. We had meetings that were um, s previously set up. And, um, you know, the, the HIMSS members that are promoting new legislation to improve health care, um, what uh, do you have any like suggestions for people who? You know, once they become involved in their chapter and become involved in HIMSS, they're on the advocacy committee. You know, what what suggestions do you have, or comments would you say, uh, to help them uh, not only uh, attend like National Health IT Week and go to Washington D.C., but possibly a state healthcare IT week? You know, right. do you have any comments, or can we talk about ideas and topics that would help people? Um, you know, just promote the use of health IT um, for better health outcomes. Definitely. Um, so if you're just joining us now, I highly recommend you check out our fourth episode. Leslie went into great detail about how to get started, how to get involved. And um, it goes back to that. Reach out to your officials. You know, take that first step, make that first phone call and make sure that you have a succinct message. And you don't have to do this on your own, by the way, guys. If you're starting out for the first time, there's tons of resources, uh, both at the chapter level and at the national level. Uh, John and I were both resources for you. You can ask us questions. But again, it all goes back to getting informed, knowing who uh, you need to reach out to, and take that first step. Because uh, sure. even looking back a year ago, uh, when I made my first outreach, it, it was scary. I yes. didn't know what I was doing. Yes. But as you go out and talk to people, you realize that they're just as excited to hear about your point of views and learn from you as you are to meet them. So it's a symbiotic relationship. So right. going back to my main point, take the first step. You know, reach out, and then everything falls into place. Perfect, perfect. Um, one of the things, you know, if you're meeting these people right. for the first time and you want to earn their respect, you want to earn their trust, um, what are some things that you could do, possibly even before meeting them in person? Right. Are there any ways uh, or ideas, possibly like inviting them to a, a chapter meeting or a sponsored? Uh, conference or something like that? Is there you, you touched on a very good point. Leslie and I talked about how you can be a resource for the uh, legislative offices. One of the things that they can also do is to come over and attend some of our events, as you pointed out. Make them uh, introduce a keynote speaker or just invite them to, to events wherein they will learn about the industry. Because one of the things that's really hard when you're representing a certain area or district, there are so many industries you have to be aware of, be up to date, and if you can uh, create an opportunity where they can come and learn, right. then I think that it's a win-win. Perfect, perfect. Do you have any other suggestions for individuals who want to advocate health information technology causes and uh, participate in legislative meetings? Uh, show up. Just really, show up. really, Woody Allen, uh, secret of <laughs> success, 80% is just showing up. So be, be part of the conversation. 
and uh, you don't have to know everything at once. Uh, I was just talking to Leslie today. I'm learning so much today. Sure. So it's an ongoing process. So I think uh, the the mindset has to be of an open learner. The mindset has to be of a continuous growing into this position. And it, it's when you meet with with uh, the either the staff or the legislator themselves, it's a relationship building. So sure. if if you make a mistake or you say something that probably you're like, oh, I should probably shouldn't have said that. That's OK. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of grow into it and you learn. And um, I think that the more you're open to that, the easier it becomes, sure. because as you learn more, you, you get better at it and you just keep going back. And then at a certain point, you become a resource for the new advocates. So that's the most important thing is handing down that knowledge to the new folks as well. Perfect. So how about you, though? You you started out uh, a year ago or so. I did. H how's your journey been? Uh, it's been uh, very interesting, very fun. Um, as as I said earlier, you know, I had the opportunity to go to Washington D.C., meet with um, former, not former, but uh, colleagues uh, within the Hims organization who are on the advocacy committees within their chapters, and had a lot of interesting discussions, learning about things that they've done. And then, um, as I said, you know, going up to Capitol Hill and meeting with our legislators and uh, specifically their staff members uh, on the day we went was very, very busy that day, but uh, very engaged staff members here in Southern California. So it was very a uh, positive uh, experience for me, exciting, and honestly, I can't wait to go again. Um, we, we talked about the, the top three items that we touched upon or the top two interoperability and security. And uh, we also would, would spoke about telehealth issues as there well. You go. So, um, so very exciting. Um, we talked a lot about how it is to be, uh, the, the steps to become an advocate and how to build relationships. One thing I think that we haven't talked about is the benefits of, of going through this journey. Um, why, what's in it for you, right? We're a volunteer organization. Yeah. So obviously um, the, the benefits are more qualitative, right? Right. So for me, I think the benefit is just getting to meet people that I would have never exactly. met with. Exactly, that's a huge benefit. Right? Right. And, and learning to, to get out of your, your, your bubble, your, your comfort zone. For sure. And, and uh, become better at either communication, being up to date with public policies, and having new relationships. Uh, I've, I've had tons of fun uh, creating new relationships with folks. How about you, John? Anything yes. you? Um, I, I guess I, all of that. I, I would add just having a uh, more informed, uh, better respect for for uh, policy making and, and how that works and just um, how the uh, inner workings, if you will, of Washington, D.C., you know, happen. You right. know, somebody who is not based near Washington, D.C., uh, who's never even had a chance to really uh, go into those buildings, you right. know, where, where our congressional leaders are housed, where their offices are located. Um, it's just, it's a very eye-opening and uh, exhilarating experience, as Leslie would say. Yes. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, and that's why I keep coming back, and I invite people to check us out. Advocacy is, is open for all, and Leslie made it very clear, you don't have to be a lawyer to be no, part of the advocacy group. Um, actually, I think that the more the, the common Janes and Joes become part of this, the more uh, we can make a case for the issues that we're advocating for. Yes. Because people want to hear from the frontliners. They want to hear from the folks who are doing this day in and day they out. They definitely do. They're not as educated in, in the topics that we are. And so we are there to help them understand better um, issues that they may have heard about but still don't get that. They just don't quite understand what right. the crux of the issue is and we're there to help them understand that. Right, good. All right, well, that's a wrap. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, well, it, this has been great. Uh, John, thank you for your time. 
and for the questions. Thank you, Ian. And guys, uh, this is our first uh, advocacy video series. We'll be coming out with more uh, soon. And I uh, hope that you uh, send us your feedback and comments. We will have a way to, to put that out there so you can send us an email yes. uh, about your comments. And we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to make this more interactive uh, with you in the coming session. So thank you very much. Thank you.